So learning by insight falls under the cognitive theories of learning. The theory of insight learning is by a German psychologist by the name Wolfgang Kohler and gives us an example of how insight, insight learning takes place. Kohler and a chimpanzee. His chimpanzee was called Sultan. Sultan was put in a cage and a banana was put outside the cage. Outside the cage, out of arm's reach. So where you cannot reach and get it with the arms. So it was out, away from where the arms could reach. In the cage, inside was a stick. And now Sultan and to think of how to get the bananas on top of the cage. When he stretches hands, he cannot reach it. And now he needed to think on how he can lengthen his hand to be able to get the bananas on top of the cage. So as he thought and figured out trying things here and there, trial and errors being done, nothing is working, eventually something happened. Sultan used the stick to retrieve the banana. The next time, the banana was put further away. Where well, by now, when he pokes one stick like in the last time, he could not reach the banana. So Sultan could not reach the banana with a stick, but this time, there were two sticks, not just one, inside his cage, which could be fitted together to reach the banana. The solution was not simple, but Sultan, being a chimpanzee, and to think of what to do. He was extremely frustrated, and he kept on finding and fingering with the sticks, picking this one, reaching for the banana, not getting there, dropping it, picking another one, not getting there, picking the stick, jumping to try and pull the banana down without success. Soon afterward, Sultan happened to align the two sticks as he fiddled them together. You know, you're sitting down now, you're holding these sticks, they're not helping you, the banana is up there, you're angry, you want to eat it, you want it too. Then, in what seemed to be a flash of inspiration, Sultan fitted the two sticks together and pulled in the elusive banana. Oh, eventually now, huh? He pulls it. Kola, the chimpa, the Kola was impressed. Kola is the psychologist that was doing this theory. He was impressed by Sutang's rapid perception of relationships and how he used his thinking capacity, that is now the chimpanzee, how it tried, how it made errors, and how it succeeded. And now, the fact that this chimpanzee, the monkey, by the name Sultan, its rapid perception of relationships is what now Kola called insights. And so he developed this theory known as learning by insight. And that is how we describe this theory. It seemed that Sultan, the chimpanzee now, understood the principle of the relationship between joining sticks and reaching distant objects. It therefore seems that Sultan suddenly perceived the relationships between the elements 
of this problem. Sort the solution and it your kind by insights. Sultan seemed to have what the gestalt psychologists would call the aha experience, aha phenomenon. Now, talking of gestalt, who is he? Gestalt is a German word meaning pattern of form. The gestalt psychologists see things in totality or in complete forms. Insight learning can therefore be described or defined as the very rapid, almost immediate learning that takes place when one sees the solution to a problem. It is a rapid perception of relationships among elements of the perceptual field permitting the solution of a problem. It involves a rapid restructuring or reorganization of the perceptual world. So now we understand the theory that we call insight learning, learning by insight. Okay? And you know now who is the proponent? And you said is Wolfgang Kohler, a German psychologist. Okay. Now, how do we apply this theory that I've just uh, described to you to a learning situation? How can we do that? So we look at application or implications of learning by insights. Implications of insight learning or application of insight learning. Number one, this theory now that we are very much aware of tells us that we should reorganize We should recognize, sorry, we should recognize that people have active minds which work with the information they receive. Children will therefore make sense of what they learn, but cognitively restructuring events, okay? Children can therefore be able to think and they can be able to solve problems. That is one application of this theory and that is one implication that we learn from this theory. The second application that we learn from this theory is that um, a rich environment is very important as far as insight learning is concerned, a rich environment. The environment should be arranged in a manner that makes insight possible. And this is what I'm calling a rich environment. I'm not referring to how much money you have or how much money a country or a school has or how much money the ministry has allocated to the learning schools, all institutions. No, the rich environment I'm referring to is, in, is that this environment should be arranged in a manner. So it's not things chaotic here and there, arranged in a manner that makes insight possible. Clues, clues should be provided so that children do not get discourages. That is, possibilities should be provided. An example from the theory is that uh, we do have children 
oh for the for the chimpanzee there were two sticks provided okay that was the insight children have to be given opportunity to try out possibilities like now i expect people to be able to attend this particular class because the link is out there yeah the content is already on the portal those are too many um pieces of information that anyone who wants to learn can actually be able to attend class whether they have been registered or not no one should not you know have an excuse of not attending classes when this opportunity has been given to us the then application of insight learning which you can also look at it as the implication of this theory is that teachers and guardians should realize that the structure and organization notes the structure and the organization of the subject matter plays an important part a very important part okay the fourth application or implication of this theory to learning is that if children are to gain insight learning if they have to gain the so called insight learning there have to be diagrams and demonstrations there has to be diagrams and demonstrations demos demos are necessary the fifth application or implication of this theory is that questions also have to be used that is challenging questions okay challenging questions have to be used when you ask questions you open children's mind even in this particular class when i ask a question i'm able to open your mind to some things that actually you might have uh, not taken seriously or things that might have skipped your mind that you never even paid attention to or thought about in detail but when a question is asked you are able to go back and think about it pay attention to it and be in a position to now explore options which we are calling insights on the same the seventh application which you can also call the implication of this theory to learning is practice mzungu anatuambia practice makes perfect practice is important if practice is to lead to improvement of skills there are some rules which have to be enforced rules which have to be enforced and these rules that we need to enforce one is guidance should be given in the early stages we talked about a structured and an organized environment so guidance should be given in the early stages let's assume that you are in a home setup yeah there must be a routine from when you wake up to when you go to bed that the child gets used to like in schools everything is structured 
you know if you're in a bonding school you wake up at five you take your shower you get ready you brush you comb your hair you you know get ready you know and then after that you go for breakfast or you go for preps first then you go for breakfast then after that you go for assembly after that you go for lesson one lesson two at what point you get to literally have breakfast again exchange you when to have 10 o'clock snack exchange you when to have sorry about that noise when to have um dinner supper four o'clock snack you know all these things are scheduled the time to go to bed all these things are scheduled why we've talked about the importance of organizing and having structures structured knowledge for children to be able to learn then the next rule the second rule that we have to enforce is knowledge of the results is necessary that is feedback should be given even for you you want feedback to be given to you you know children also require feedback to be given if they do well let them know if they need to improve again let them know if uh, the concept is home they have learned it they have figured it out they have the skills then then let them know okay so knowledge of the result is necessary then the other rule remember we are talking about the importance of practice okay as an application and also as an implication of the theory of learning by insight. So we are saying rules are important and they're important because we are emphasizing practice. So now we've said guidance should be given in the early stages. We've said knowledge of the results, the results is necessary. And now practice must be regular practice must be regular this is another rule that will make practice work yeah practice must be regular the fourth rule is that practice periods must be of suitable length yeah? so you can also say you i learned something in a second or in a minute apana Practice periods must be of suitable length. If they are too long, they'll be boring. If they are too short, facts will not be grasped adequately because you must practice, you must have the knowledge of the results, you know, guidance. So if you take all the time to give guidance and knowledge of the result is not given, practice is not regular, you know, the period of giving this information is inadequate, then practice will actually not be given the importance it deserves. Another rule, and this is the fifth rule, there should be practice of holes. Practice of holes, you know, some important things should not be left out during the practice exercise. So when you say you're practicing, go all the way. Don't do things halfway. Don't leave some things out. Not explored, not touched, not discovered. Yet you're practicing the knowledge of whole, holistic, whole, W H O. E as whole. Okay. Then the sixth rule, as much as possible, the practice 
should be done in a life like conditions in a real life like condition all right a real life situation or a real life condition the behavior observed uh okay in a real life situation sorry i went off the rider right there so those are the rules that you need to take into consideration guidance should be given no range of resort is necessary practice must be regular what else have we said there should be practice of hose holisticness wholesomeness practice periods must be suitable of suitable length and as much as possible do the practice in real life situations or in real life conditions okay